Here to talk Tesla and other auto industry news is the car coach, Lauren Fix, who is also the president of the North American Car Utility and Truck of the Year Award. Lauren, thanks for being with us. Uh, Mr. Musk was going to create that submarine to get the soccer team out. I just, I was rolling my eyes uh, when I read, read that. I mean, we all were glad that those kids were, were saved. But uh, the big news today is about his trip to, to China. And if it's possible to hear somebody rolling their eyes, when I was reading that headline about 500,000 vehicles, I thought I heard you rolling your eyes. Uh, what do you make <laughs> of this announcement? Well, first off, I have to give Elon some credit. I don't know him personally, but I will say the fact that he was the only CEO of all the manufacturers that went over there and brought the little ship. They actually built that through the SpaceX program and brought engineers over to try to help save those kids, even though they didn't use it. And he had, of course, made a public appearance because it was all about the show. The fact that he tried to do something, I give him credit for that. So that's where he gets some credit from me. But uh, he likes to play the game. In 2015, 2016, 2017, and here we are in 2018, again he says, we're going to China. We're going to build a factory. And China won't own any of it. Well, China has their own regulations, and we know that. And G General Motors and BMW, they're all building and assembling cars or are in the process of building more factories. And guess what? China owns half of them. And he's going to need about $5 billion to do it out of his own pocket. When you partner with China, you cut that cost in half. And it will take about three years if you're super aggressive on building it, which means he'd have to start like yesterday. Uh, it's going to take quite a few billion dollars. You've got to train employees, and it would double the capacity. I, I think that it's, it's a very ambitious suggestion, but to me it sounds like hype in order to raise money because he's burning through cash like nobody's business. And as soon as they make that 200,000th car here in the U.S., he's going to lose a $7,500 tax credit, and the competitors are going to have that available, and that will hurt his sales. Oh, that's very interesting on the tax front, Lauren. Uh, you know, Tesla yeah. isn't the only one I, I read. I don't know if it's news out today, but I read it today that BMW has announced that they, they too, will make mini cars in China as, as part of a right. joint venture. Now, this is going to be a joint venture, unlike the Tesla deal right. with Great Wall mm -hmm. Motor, I, a motor company. I assume that is the partnership that they all have there. And uh, the right. BMW CEO, uh, Harold Kruger, touted the deal for the joint German automaker. What is it about China? We know that they're a huge population. There's lots of consumers. But you've told us before, we talk about electric vehicles in the States. You know, look, there's no places to plug them in in the Midwest, et cetera. Right. Uh, tell us why right. China is such a potentially lucrative place for car makers, in particular electric vehicle makers. All right, well, number one, they, they are demanding and mandating that by 2020, every vehicle on the road is going to be electric. That's a, a, a big challenge. But remember, China does a lot of silly things like that, like, we're going to say you can have one child. Then they realized that everybody had boys and they had no girls, so it wasn't easy to expand the population. So now they said, no, you can have two or three kids. So sometimes they make rules and regulations that have they have to backpedal on, and this may be one of them. Uh, one of the things that China's doing, though, and I give them credit for this, is they're building nuclear power plants like crazy because they don't have enough electrical power, and how do you get that quickly? You can't do it off of wind and solar enough. You have to use nuclear power. So they're building nuclear power plants in order to power this, but they're still going to have an infrastructure problem. There's not enough places for everyone to charge. People in general across the world are very impatient. They want to plug in their car and have instant charge like you've fill up for a tank of gas, and that may cause some issues. We'll see if they backpedal on this, but right now, if you're smart, like BMW and General Motors and Ford, they're building cars in that country because they know people will be buying those electric vehicles, and certainly you don't want to miss out on that because that's money, that's profits, that's sales, and that's good for global, and if, especially if President Trump ends up reducing those tariffs to zero, and you have a true free market globally, you're going to watch a lot of cars being shipped out of China to other countries as well. So this is very interesting to watch. I'm, I'm watching very closely what's going on with these meetings. We shall see. That could change everything. Uh, it reminds me of that old Beach Boys song. Wouldn't it be nice if we had yeah. free trade? Uh, Lauren, uh, we covered yesterday on the program uh, Nissan, you know, the latest to confirm that they falsified emission related, uh, related reports on 19 different vehicles. I mean, is this stuff just going to continue to drip, drip, drip out? And, and do you think there might be others that we have not yet heard about? 
yes, I do think there's probably others out there. What happened in this particular case is they had people that weren't qualified approving their EPA standards. And, and you have to be really careful because there are regulations. Here in the U.S., we have the Department of Transportation, we have the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, and we have what's called FMVSS, which is the Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standards. And each one of them kind of contradict each other. So you have to know each one and have lawyers to kind of place it out. And so if you follow the regulations exactly to a T, you're fine. But the problem is those regulations keep changing. And in other countries, they keep changing. And so if you're not on top of it, you're then breaking the rules. And in this case, it costs them on the stock market. And Nissan's smarter than that. I mean, Carlos Ghosn has been running this company very successfully. Nissan makes great product. But when people find out that you're lying, it does impact the bottom line, which is sales. And that's not smart. Absolutely. Got to be honest with consumers. Lauren Fix, the car yes. coach and president of the North American Car Utility and Truck of the Year Award. Thanks for your time as always, Lauren. Thank you.